What are we making? <laughs> Go ahead, you say it. She don't even want to say it. We're making Skeeter oh, Pea God. or the best lemon wine you will ever have. I promise you. Do you know why they call it Skeeter Pea? Nope. <laughs> she don't even care. The best time to drink it is when the mosquitoes are out in the summertime, but it's also the color. I can't wait to show you this. It's going to be a great video, and it is all about Skeeter P today. <laughs> she can't wait. I want you to call it something different. <laughs> all right, we'll call it How To Done Right, Best Lemon Wine You'll Ever Have. That works. <laughs> so call me one more best day. Now, a lot of people that make Skeeter pea, they make it with just lemon juice, and that's the original recipe. And some people will put lime juice in as well. We're going to use real lemons because we want the real flavor of this. We're going to put the zest in there, and the preparation of these lemons is the most important thing. So here's what you're going to need to make Skeeter pea. You need some pectic enzyme. That's gonna help with hazing. Camden tablets for sterilization, some acid blend, yeast nutrient, wine tannin, and some sugar. And don't forget your wine yeast. You can't make wine without yeast. Red Star. And here is the star of the show today, organic lemons. All right, for this lemon wine recipe, you want three to four pounds of lemons per gallon of wine. Now, if you can get organic lemons because of this recipe, you wanna get them because we're gonna take this up a notch and use the zest. Volcano organic lemon juice. If you're gonna use lemon juice, you wanna make sure it has no sulfites and no sulfates. If you use regular lemons, you, you know, with if you can't find organic, just make sure you're peeling that off. You don't want to get that skin in there. And I would suggest not using the zest. This also can be considered one of the cheapest wines you can make if you have access to lemons. If you're in Florida or California, mm -hmm. man, you can make this for pennies on a bottle. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that notification bell. And check out these new stickers I bought. I'll put a link to these, but they're custom labels we got on Amazon. And they're fairly cheap. Just make sure when I pass these out, everybody's going to get a sticker now. All right. And for this lemon wine, we need exactly two pounds of sugar. We're going to dissolve on the stove to get to a good ABV. All right. We're doing a one gallon batch. So we got our two pounds of sugar. Again, you want two pounds for every gallon of wine. So we're gonna add that to our stock pot here or our pot, and then we're gonna add water in about the same amount. And we're just gonna add our water and get this boil, not to boiling, but almost to boil. And you just wanna keep stirring it until it becomes crystal clear and you're not scraping any sugar. And then we'll just shut the heat off and cool it to room temperature. All right, now a lot of you asked how much water do I put in with this sugar? You just want equal parts. So, or just eyeball it, which is what we just did here. But do you see how clear this is when you start to see bubbling around the edge and it's clear, no sugar being scraped? That's it. Shut it off. Let it cool to room temperature. All right, not to bore you too much here, but make sure you're sanitizing your equipment. We use star sand here. You got a half ounce star sand and we'll add to this our two and a half gallons of warm water. And remember all this stuff you're seeing in this video from the additives to the equipment, I got Amazon links in the description. And just remember, if you're gonna make Skeeter pee, just expect the fermentation to take a little bit longer. Two and a half weeks for this batch. So now what we're doing, we're ready to prepare the lemons. You want to sanitize your equipment. I'm doing the board here. I'm going to sanitize where we're going to put our lemons. Get this all going. And we'll let that on there and then we'll cut some lemons. All right, so this is key. We're preparing our lemons. We just want to get 
that yellow zest off of these lemons as much as you can. That is going to put this over the edge for this lemon wine. Now remember, when we're zesting these lemons, we just want to get the yellow. The white is going to make it bitter. So the next step, all we want to do is we want to cut the ends off because there's a lot of, a lot of the white is in them ends. So just chop the ends off. It'll make it a little bit easier. Also, when we then slice the white off. Guess what we're making, honey? <laughs> Are you going to make me say it? Say it. <laughs> Skeeter pea. Skeeter pea, <laughs> or I'm telling you, it's going to be the best lemon wine you will ever have. A lot of people say this is their favorite. I don't know if it's going to beat the banana wine or the pineapple, but we will definitely do a taste test of this for you. So we got our ends chopped off. Now what you want to do is remove the white. You don't want it remove too much of the lemon because that's what we want. That's going to give us our flavor. But do you see the juice coming out of these? Just do the best you can. If you get a little white in there, you don't have to be perfect here. It's going to be fine because we got enough, plenty of lemons to get that lemon flavor here for sure. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we just want to cut these lemons up into smaller chunks. So one inch chunks is fine. But look how juicy these are. If you can get the, the seeds out, better yet. But these look like they got a lot in, so I don't know if we're going to mess with it too much. Okay, it's time to get some of our additives in our bucket. And you've watched me do this many a time. People have said, why do you put it at the bottom? It's just the way I do it. We're putting one Camden tablet in here per gallon. I'll have the recipe for the one, three, and five gallon in the description. The next thing we're going to use is the acid blend. We want a half a teaspoon of this. The next thing is yeast nutrient. We want a half a teaspoon of yeast nutrient. That's just going to help your yeast get going. And the next thing is pectic enzyme. You want half a teaspoon of the pectic enzyme. So the next thing, wine tannin. I always use wine tannin, half a teaspoon of this. Put it in the bucket. All right, it's time to get our mesh bag in here. This is just going to save you headaches. So we got that in there. Now we're going to add our fruit. Man, it smells like lemons, doesn't it? It smells amazing. Does it smell like pee? No, God, that's no, it doesn't that. smell like pee. It smells like lemons. And look at that zest. Again, that's just going to put it over the top. So now it's time to get your bag cinched up. And I always like to zip tie it just to be safe because I don't want any of this pulp getting out there. Again, my bag is a little bit too big. This is for a three or five gallon batch but we just use these. You just do the best that you can. All right, the bag is cinched up. We're ready to add this water in here. My wife is gonna try not to spill it. Remember, this is the sugar water that we did on the stove. Now we wanna add some water in here. You wanna make sure you're doing this gradually because we wanna test the ABV so we can get it to where we want. This is a two gallon bucket. So I know we need to at least add about one gallon of water in here, but just do it slowly. Check your ABV frequently because you don't want to overshoot your mark. So now is also time to add your lemon juice. This was 100% organic lemon. Again, we just want more lemon flavor. So I'm going to put this whole thing in here. Now it's mainly, it says on the container that it's 30% juice. So there's a lot of water in here. So again, we're adding water at the same time. <laughs> it's making me think of Skeeter pee. <laughs> Skeeter pee. <laughs> we're peeing in the wine. All right, we're going to add a little more water because I know it's probably not to the level where I want to be. Remember, we're got a, probably about a half a gallon of pulp in here. So let's just test the AB Reeve right now before we go too far. Now remember, we put them additives in the bottom of this bucket. So we're just going to stir it as best we can to get everything mixed in. But remember, we're going to mix this in for the next 10 to 14 days. So we'll get this added and mixed in pretty good within that time period. My wife says it looks like what? 
It definitely looks like pee now. <laughs> <laughs> it's skeeter pee. Ugh. But you can notice that the, the wine tannin, that will go away. That will change the color of this to a little bit of a brownish color. But after a few days, you'll see that will dissipate. All right, so we got our sanitized cup here. And we're going to fill our cylinder here. And then we're going to float that hydrometer in here. We want to get that up about halfway with the liquid. And that looks pretty good. So let's just drop our hydrometer in here and get a reading. And I'll get a close up of this to see where we're at, but I know it's gonna be pretty high already. All right, you can see from this picture, we came in about 12 and a half to 13%. That is perfect. It's gonna be a high ABV Skeeter P lemon wine or lemonade wine or hard lemon cider. So now it's time to get this sealed up. So that Camden tablet can kill all that wild juice in that lemon. That's what we want to do because 24 hours from now, we want to use our potent yeast that's going to just make this wine much better. Here's the airlock, honey. You want to put that in there. And do you see where I have it filled? You want to make sure you're filling that exactly halfway the water level up that airlock. Okay, so it's been exactly 24 hours. It's time to get our yeast in. You know I love Red Star Champagne yeast just because it's never failed me. So let's get this bucket opened up. And what we want to do is for this one pack of yeast, for, since I'm only doing a one gallon batch, we're only going to use half a pack. If you're doing a three to five gallon batch, the whole pack is fine. Look at that. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to sanitize my paddle here. So that's good. We got our paddle here. We just want to get a quick little stir because we want to get oxygen in this bucket at this point because it's going to make your yeast bloom. So that's all I'm going to do. Scrape that bottom. Make sure I don't got any of them additives still down in there. But man, if you could smell this, it smells amazing. So there we go. All I want to do now is sprinkle this yeast wherever you see liquid. There is no need to mix this yeast in. And we're going to stir this for the next five days to make sure it's getting enough oxygen. That's pretty good. That's about a half a pack. And I'm going to leave it at that. We'll get the lid back on, seal it up. And we'll be back in 24. All right, so it's been exactly 24 hours since we put that yeast in. I got my sanitized paddle here. We're gonna open this up and we should start to see some foaming at this point. Probably very little, but like I said, we're gonna see, you can see the foam here. That's what you want. That means the yeast is working. I'm going to just fast forward in this part here, but you'll see each day as I stir this for five days. That's all we need to do. And then we're just going to let it go. But we're making Skeeter pee. That's it. Let's get the lid back on. Look at this. The Skeeter pee is going crazy. So you can see the bubbler has really come to a crawl on this lemon wine, or like I like to call it, Skeeter pee. So I will give you one hint. Lemons are very difficult to ferment. I started this about two and a half weeks ago. It took me a week to get the fermentation going. Make sure you watch that fermentation video because this is the batch I had the problems with. But I can tell you from this bubbler, it's slowly leveling off. It's time to test the AB and make sure we got the specific gravity down to 1.0, and then we're gonna get this in the carboy. So now remember, everything's been sanitized. We're gonna add a little wine to our cylinder here so we can check the specific gravity to make sure it's done. I know it's done, but I just wanna show it to you. So I got my sanitized hydrometer in here. We're just gonna drop this in. And again, we're looking for the specific gravity side. I'll give you a close-up of this, but we should see that go down to the 1.0. 
That means all the sugar has been converted to alcohol and it is exactly 1.0. It's time to remove the lid and get this racked. Oh man, if you could smell this. So I got my hose down in my one gallon carboy down below here and I'm just gonna get the siphon going. What you don't wanna do in this stage is you don't wanna mess with this too much because if there's dead yeast at the bottom, we wanna get it out here if we can. Oh, look at that color. It is spectacular. And I'll tell you one thing, it smells exactly like lemon. So there you go. I got my one gallon filled up and I got another quart. That's gonna come in handy when I top this off. Now I didn't have a totally enough to fill up that quart, so I just topped it off with water because there's a lot of lemons in here. So here it is. We got our Skeeter pea slash lemon wine into our secondary. That's what this is called. We got our airlocks on here because there might still be a little fermentation that might happen in here for the next 30 days, but it will be so minimal, you won't be able to, to tell the difference. But now what we want to do is we want to get these in a cool place to let this settle. Do you see the color in this? It's magnificent. When this clears up, you'll be able to see straight through here. I can't wait to taste this. I know my wife can't wait to taste the oh. Skeeter pea. Ah. <laughs> we'll call it lemon wine for her. That's all we want to do. Get it in the basement. Let it settle. I'll talk to you in part two when we're going to finish this up. Rack it, bottle it, and taste test it. I can't wait. Stay tuned for part two.